So as draft season is is here, we know you all possums out there are tired of hearing of, is it Christian McCaffrey or Jonathan Taylor number one? We get it. You probably have been beaten over the head with who to take in the early rounds of draft. So that's why this episode, we're going to talk about the late round gym. So this is any player that in current ADP of like Sleeper, Yahoo, any of those is going in the 10th round or later. So basically 100 or later because we're doing 10, you know, 10 team leagues basically. Um, so we're going to find you some diamonds in the rough that you could take late in your drafts when everybody else is kind of, you know, still going for their second slice of pizza or grabbing their fifth beer, whatever. These are the players that you can grab during those rounds that might turn into something that could win you a league. So, Josh, you want to kick us off? Yeah, uh, I can't say that I follow this to a T, but I will say my first one is at least. So I'm in that. I'm in that. So uh, number one, in my opinion, is Kadarius Tony. So along along with like the entire Giants, basically, Tony had an injury marred season last year. Uh, he did still finish with 420 yards uh, in only you know four games of actually starting. So. Um, everyone was so hyped about Tony going to last year in redraft and in dynasty. And I, I'm in a, enough leagues of both to like have that like excitement on both sides. And for some reason, everybody just kind of forgot about him this year. Um, and including me until we did our home league draft. And mm-hmm. I, I understand that the giants are basically just a big old giant dumpster fire and that they're probably going to lose <laughs> NFC East. If, if we're being honest, maybe Washington gives them a run for their money. Uh, but, and yeah, there's a lot of receivers on the team, but like, Tell me one that's more promising than Tony and do not say Wandale Robinson. I understand <laughs> you're, we're all excited about the little guy. He looks great. We're all, I, he'll probably have a good year. Uh, but personally, Tony was super versatile at Florida. And I think he's going to continue to be at the giants here, uh, even with Daniel Jones at the helm still. So he's currently being drafted as wide receiver 44 in the 10th round of fantasy drafts. And I'm not saying the dude's going to go for a thousand yards and 10 TDs. He definitely could, but even if he didn't, you're still getting 700, 800 yards out of him, and you could definitely have a worse option in the 10th round. So whether you went running back heavy or you just want that solid depth piece for your team uh, with some high upside, go get you some Tony, man. I'm, I'm excited. I agree with you completely here because here's the thing. We saw Wondell Robinson played in this first in this last preseason game, and honestly, it looked like uh, Rondale Moore 2.0 where, like, We could not figure out quite how to use – they could not figure out quite how to use him out there, which was mildly frustrating. So that would not be your promising. And Sterling Shepard just got activated off the pup. So Ronde Robinson may not even have a job just yet. But Kadarius Toney, on the other hand, we know what he's fully capable at, you know, when he's at full strength. So I think that, you know, Brian Dable is trying to figure out what to do with that offense. And I think that if he was smart – Kadarius Tony would be the person that he builds around because he is the best receiver on that team. I don't care that Kenny Galladay is there. He's washed. All right. I, I don't, I don't want to hate on my guy, Ken, Kenny Galladay, but <laughs> I, I do agree that I don't know what happened from the switch from Detroit to that. You went from one bad situation to the, the next and somehow got worse. Uh, but my, my guy, <clears throat> Tony, like it, it, he, I understand he had like one big game last year, but he also had like five injuries. Like I look, I actually did some research on this while looking up this and, He had like four leg injuries and a shoulder injury last year, and he was nursing all of that. And that one healthy game, he hit that 189 with like two touchdowns or whatever. So uh, super excited about him. And I I just I feel like you're just getting him at dirt cheap. And even if he doesn't pan out your 10th round pick, it's not not important, but it's one of the uh, I messed up my 10th round pick. I'll get over it. But if you mess up your second or third, you're kind of little bummy for the rest of the year so exactly just remember folks jason garrett was calling plays for the giants last season so <laughs> i forgot all about that so let's uh let's just say the water may be under the bridge for the giants we hope steffy small shout out to you giants fan all right my first player is chase claypool surprisingly going outside of the top 10 rounds and i think that it's because of what happened last season he did not live up to the hype that he had in the first season, which was understandable. Uh, Big Ben also was on, like, basically on death's bed out there throwing passes. It was hard to watch at times for the for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But here's what happened, Josh, in the offseason. They acquired a receiver by the name of George Pickens. And guess what happens to Chase Claypool now? He gets to go into the slot, which is where he belongs. That is where Chase Claypool 
belongs on the field. And now that they have Deontay Johnson on one side, George Pickens on the other side, and then put Chase Claypool in the slot, it's a match made in heaven. Chase Claypool will not be as bad this year, bad, quote unquote, bad this year as he was last year. And so by, it's just, it's simple math. The only thing that you can try to knock me on here is that it's Mitch Trubisky. But I think Money Mitch loves his slot receivers as much as, you know, they Chase Claypool is going to be in the slot. So I, for that reason, Josh, I just think Chase Claypool, this is a big year to use for the bounce back. He's going to be used heavy a lot. You don't trust Mitch throwing the ball down the field anyway. I think Chase Claypool makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't understand, and this this isn't this isn't to disagree with your point, but I don't understand why George Pickens has already been crowned king of the rookie wide receivers by almost everyone. Uh, I've seen it by analysts and just fans alike. Everyone is just already crowned Pickens, and I'm not saying that he's not gonna be good. And then basically just downplayed Claypool. And they're like, ah, Claypool's trash. Claypool put up 800 yards both years that he's played. Mm-hmm. And I understand his first year was a, a touchdown heavy year. Trust me, I saw it as an Eagles fan. Um, but I just don't understand why we're writing off Claypool right away, why we're giving Pickens just the keys to the kingdom like he's going to be the next Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and go out for 1,400 yards. There's still Deontay Johnson there. They still have Claypool there. Najee is still probably going to be pretty prevalent in the passing game. They have Freermuth there. And then once again, like you said, we still it's still Trubisky and Pickett. Or Sorry. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't know why Pick, I keep Pick thinking it, Pick Pickett it. and Pickens on the same team is just frustrating. That's why I felt wrong. I keep mixing up Pickett and Ritter. And I, I well, was about to say, oh, okay. I was about to say your your names thing might be back this season with Pickett and Pickett on Pickens on the Pick same team. Pickett and Pickett. That's why I felt like it was wrong. But I just I don't understand why we're <laughs> get, we're crowning Pickens king right now. I there's at least three rookie wide receivers where I'm putting way above him right now. Uh, but anyway, just in general, I love the Claypool pick 109 or 100 wherever they're at. Uh, is the perfect place. Him and Tony are both just completely slept on. I like how our brains went the same way here. So mm-hmm. same thing. All right, back to you. All right. So I, I this is where I deviate just a little bit. Um, so I my my second one was Kareem Hunt. So I know he's not quite in the top 100, uh, but he is one of the best sleeper running backs you can get right now. Obviously, running back dries up a little faster than wide receiver. So and and, and I get the narrative with Kareem Hunt. You know, bad team. Watson suspended has another running back in front of him, but I just don't get what Kareem Hunt has done to be disrespected and drafted as RB 31 in like the eighth round. So it makes no sense for it for me. Uh, Personally, I just, in his three full healthy season, he's gone for more than a thousand yards and had double digit touchdowns. Obviously 2021 and 2019 were both kind of injury marred. He had uh, played about half the games, Uh, but in 2020 he did, he did exactly this with Nick Chubb still getting 200 carries. And now he's on a team that's going to be without Watson for what? 12 games total. Cause mm-hmm. I assume by week, obviously somewhere uh, we have, we have Cooper. Yeah. And then some young receivers, uh, some unproven as a, as a, a past Browns fan, you understand this. And then some, some young exciting guys, but at the same time, Kareem hunt, how is he not going to get peppered with targets? I mean, he is a pass catching back. He is that guy on the team. Nick, they, they decided Nick Chubb can't catch a ball a long time ago, so they're not throwing to him. Uh, <laughs> you got you got a quarterback out there in Jacoby Brissett and whoever the heck else, Josh Rosen, that's out there, who is going to be looking for the dump off pretty much every time. So, yes, yeah. he, he did request a trade, which will probably be honored at some point throughout the season, whether it's a loss season or someone just gives them the right price tag or they make a move at quarterback. Um, but that's basically making him an RB1 on – any team that he gets traded to, unless I assume he's not getting traded to a team that doesn't need him. So his value in draft, like basically right around that, you're getting unproven rookies at that point, which I'm also down. I'm down for the dart throw on those uh, for sure. I love me some rookies. You never know what's going to happen, but personally, I think he makes a great addition to any team and I'm comfortable as getting him up to your RB two in the eighth round. If you went wide receiver heavy or. Yeah, no, he, he, it makes a lot of sense. He should be going higher. I think that his price probably is dipped a lot because we weren't sure of the Watson situation, but now that we know that he is for sure going to come back this season, um, you're going to get Watson right at playoff time for fantasy and have a chance to, you know, and I assume learning, you know, learning the offense will probably be easier if he can have Kareem hunt to kick it out to, um, I'm sure that he will enjoy having that quite a bit. I mean, 
I don't know how much they're going to be running with Nick Chubb when Deshaun Watson gets there. I still, you know, you I've been beating this drum the whole offseason. I don't understand how Deshaun Watson is going to be in a, in a run-heavy scheme. It doesn't make any sense to me. So that can only mean good things for Kareem Hunt as they have him out there on passing downs uh, for the most part. So, yeah, I, I think that he's a steal there, and he's going to finish a lot higher than what he's getting drafted right now. I just, I just think system aside and new quarterback aside, it's still a talented running back. Kareem Hunt knows how to play the game, and whether he's on the Browns or he's on a different team, he's going to play the game. So – Super excited about getting him. I actually was going to grab him, and our other Billy drafted him in our league. So, That rascal. The rascal. Okay, well, I'll get on to my last one for the, the top half of this, and that would be Mr. Jacoby Myers from the Patriots. Hey, Josh, do you remember Jacoby Myers and his inability to catch touchdowns and how fun that was last season? I mean, let's not get carried away with his two touchdowns, but, you know. Well, I know, but, like, it was a big story of everybody trying to figure out when is he going to catch his first touchdown? When is that going to happen? It was well, just wild. Apparently, everybody else has forgotten everything about Jacoby Myers, too. So he had 126 targets last season, and that led the team by a lot. I mean, I've been trying to get Kendrick Bourne to happen this entire offseason, which apparently still is not getting there. But also, it's because Mac Jones is Mac Jones. Sorry, Patriots fans. I don't want to, you know. Mac Jones is catching a stray here, but that's what it is. Uh, Jacoby Myers is still the wide receiver one on this team. I mean, I know Devontae Parker's there. I know that Kendrick Bourne's there. They were happy about Tyquan Thornton, but he's hurt and probably won't be there for a while. So that kind of leads us right back to Jacoby Myers, and he's not even going in the top, like, 11 to 12 rounds. It's kind of ridiculous based on his usage just last season. I know – that it was funny that he wasn't getting touchdowns. It was funny. It cannot happen again. Like with the amount of balls that's being thrown his way this season, if it's, if it's even close to what it was last season, there a is no way that he remains out of the end zone and B there's no way that he doesn't at least like blow past what he did last season as far as his stats. So I think Jacoby Myers is one of those guys you stashed at the end of your draft and you feel happy that you might have a flex play for the entire season i mean he's basically the number one by default because they're the talent level is just not there Devonte parker obviously w- was a talented receiver and probably still has some left in the tank but he's not the lead guy anymore and jacoby myers like you add four or five touchdowns to that he bumps up like to top 20 wide receiver so right completely I, I mean, agree exactly and i mean like even you know, PPR top 30 wide receiver. That's very useful to have on your team, especially where you're getting him. Like you're going to, you're going to take players in the seventh, eighth round that may not even get to the top 30 of PPR wide receivers. So this is, this is, you know, this is a, a low risk, potentially high reward play. One thing I'm seeing here just by our, our talk so far is basically what happens is rookies get kicked out the door the second they're not rookies again. And basically, two second and third year guys are like, well, he hasn't had a thousand yards uh, ever, so he's he's not good. And it's like you see him progressively get better and better. Yes, this was a, a weird situation with the zero touchdowns his first two and a half years, really. Uh, but the guy, the guy's got talent, and there's not much to go around out there with uh, talented wide receivers on the team. So, got, I got to say, love it. I legitimately think that people think that the Patriots got upgraded wide receivers. And that's why people have just all of like forgotten about him. Cause it's not like Devonte Parker's going higher than him. Cause he's not Kendrick Bourne's not going higher than him. That's not happening. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure in our draft that we just did, Josh, I'm pretty sure both Devonte Parker and uh, Kendrick Bourne, both weren't taken. They're on the waiver wire. I'm pretty positive. And I don't think Jacoby Myers was taken until late either. So we literally just watched it happen. And that's an offense that somebody's got to catch the ball. You all, you and Joe love to throw that around. Somebody's got to catch the ball for the Patriots. It's not going to be the tight ends because we didn't see that last year unless Mac decides that's what he wants to do. But I, he clearly likes having a good wide receiver to pepper with targets. It's going to be him until we know otherwise. Listen, what happened was Belichick tried to recreate the Gronkowski, Aaron Hernandez, uh, situation with the two tight ends which was just dumb there was receivers on the board last year and then they really didn't make any Devonte parker was a pretty late signing if i remember correctly it was like a, oh yeah i guess we should add one uh apparently they're pretty much done with Aguilar at this point so i i don't see anyone taking 
the reins like at all. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know why we wouldn't. Yeah, so. I forgot. No, no, Sangler has had mm, a couple of pop plays, but still, like it's just tough for me to believe that. Oh no, they've already said he's a cut candidate. So, right. oh okay, sweet. Well, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I, I get all, all right. the news on Eagles, but nice. I like <laughs> you. Just I like how you just keep like a web of players around. They're all Eagles, and you just have them. You know, your hands in all of these different teams. I need to be able to insert Eagles references at any given moment. That's the that's thing. great. So you have to keep up on who's where. That's great. All right. All right.